Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. I hope everyone is doing well and doing well without sports. Many of you probably saw our Selection Sunday video just a few days ago, and I hope you were able to follow us as we gave you our updates on our Twitter page, at Gridiron Expert, as we went through the first round, the round of 64. But if you didn't, you came to the right place. Because now we're going to recap the first round action and get you ready for the round of 32. So let's not delay it any further. Let's jump right on into the Midwest region, where, of course, our number one overall seed in Kansas took fairly easy care of Robert Morris. The Colonials took care of North Carolina Central in their play-in game, but fell to the Jayhawks 91-50. Of course, that is to be expected in a 1-16 versus 16 matchup. Kansas will then be taking on LSU, who escaped Arizona in their 8-9 matchup, defeating the Wildcats 81-80. Skyler Mays went down the court, hit a lay-in with 1.8 seconds left. Arizona's last-ditch effort for a three-point attempt rimmed out at the buzzer, and the Tigers are advancing in the tournament once again under Will Wade. So that Jayhawks-Tigers matchup in the round of 32 is going to be very, very intriguing uh, when we give you those updates here in a few days. Further down the line, we have Ohio State taking care of Liberty in that 5-12 matchup. One that's very, very difficult to uh, pick and a very, very big trap game for those higher seeds. But the Buckeyes, a team that kind of had a season of two halves, took care of the Flames 80-68, to and they will be taking on Butler, the four seed, who was able to get past UC Irvine in dominating fashion, defeating the Anteaters 78-48 to after hitting 10 three-pointers in that game. UC Irvine was a Cinderella team last year after upsetting Kansas State as a 13 seed. Just were unable to do so this year. Right below them, we had that 6-11 matchup, and it was Arkansas that will be advancing to the round of 32, getting past Illinois. A phenomenal, phenomenal season for the Fighting Illini. But Isaiah Cho, one of the best three-point shooters in the entire country, hit one with just seven seconds left, and Arkansas advances to the round of 32 with a 74-70 victory. And they will be facing off against the Duke Blue Devils, three seed out of the Midwest after defeating New Mexico State 82 to 74. So a pretty close game for the Blue Devils. Certainly too close for comfort. New Mexico State, a team that was undefeated in the WAC this season. A team that nearly beat Auburn last year. One that Duke knew they could not overlook. They did for a little bit, probably a little over half of the game, but were able to pull it out in the end. They set up a 1994 National Championship rematch in the round of 32 against the Razorbacks. And rounding out the Midwest, we have Michigan taking down Florida in a blowout fashion. This is one of the more shocking results of this round of 64. The Wolverines shot lights out, defeating the Gators 86-60. So a phenomenal first year for Juwan Howard with the Wolverines, getting an NCAA tournament win, and they will have a chance to take on Creighton yet again. The Blue Jays defeating Boston University 74-44 a 30-point victory for them, and that's going to set up a rematch from their matchup back in November. So that wraps up the Midwest region and how the round of 64 shaped out over there. Not too many upsets, just a handful, but I can expect better action in the following round. We're going to go over and take a look at the South region now, and every year in the NCAA tournament, there is one region that is the upset region. This year, it is the South region. With eight games played here, four were won by the lower seed. Of course, Baylor, the one seed in this region, took care of business against Prairie View A&M, defeating them 80-57. to But they will be facing off against Colorado, the nine seed, who upset Houston 65-64, to a game that came all the way down to the wire. So the Cougars, a team that was a Sweet 16 team last year before falling to Kentucky. Many thought could make a run this year to the American Athletic, fell just short. Shot 28 free throw attempts, doubled the amount that Colorado did, but was unable to get the job done. And you see how important those shots are 
in a game like this. So the Buffalo will be taking on the Bears in the round of 32. Right below them, we had another 5-12 matchup, and the 12 seed was unable to get it done again. Wisconsin getting past the Belmont Bruins 79-74. A Wisconsin team that was really mediocre for the majority of the uh, season, but really found their stride, hit their stride later on to claim that 5 seed, one of the top teams in the Big Ten. They'll be facing off against Villanova, who got past the 13th seeded Akron Zips 66 to 59. Akron, a team that we mentioned, plays very, very good defense, and we saw that holding the Wildcats just 66 points. A team out of the MAC that thought they might be able to make a run this year, but Jay Wright and the Wildcats is a little too much. And we've seen in the past some classic games between Wisconsin and Villanova just a few years ago. The Badgers taking down the Wildcats in a one versus eight matchup in the round of 32. This year, a little more even, four versus five, will be very interesting to see who can escape that one and get into the Sweet 16. Right below that, another 6-11 matchup and another 11 seed getting the win. The UCLA Bruins taking down Iowa 68-61. The Bruins were a team that just barely snuck into this NCAA tournament field while the Hawkeyes were a team led by Luca Garza and a team that many thought, and myself included, Thought could make a run to at least this week 16. But Mick Cronin had his guys ready. They finished the season strong. The momentum carried into postseason play. And UCLA is advancing to the round of 32 to take on not Seton Hall, but Little Rock, the Trojans, UALR, who took down Miles Powell and the Pirates 86 to 77. This was by far one of the most stunning upsets of this tournament and one of the most stunning upsets just in the round of 64. The Trojans jumped out to an early, early 10-point lead and never really let it go. Seton Hall only trimming it to seven. They played phenomenal on the glass, getting rebound after rebound. UALR shooting very well in the first half, and they take down the Pirates to set up an 11 versus 14 matchup. So guys, an 11 seed or a 14 seed will be in the Sweet 16. And once again, that's what makes March Madness so great. And rounding out the South region, we had that 7 versus 10 matchup. The only overtime game that we had in the round of 64 came as Indiana took down Providence 78 to 72. The Hoosiers, like UCLA, like Arkansas, were a bubble team right up until the end of the season, just slipped in there and proved why they deserve to be in this tournament field, taking down a dangerous Friars team out of the Big East in what was by far one of the most thrilling games of this opening round. Indiana advancing to the next round, and they will take on Florida State, who got by Northern Kentucky 78-64 to in that 2 versus 15 matchup. And do keep in mind that Indiana did defeat Florida State earlier this season. So hopefully the Seminoles, or the Seminoles are hoping to get a little revenge on the Hoosiers. We're going to switch on over to the East region now to highlight the action that took place there. And we'll start once again with the number one seed in that region, the Dayton Flyers, led by Obi Toppin, took down the Siena Saints 84-75. to Toppin already declared for the NBA draft, but his college career is not over yet. He is looking to bring the Flyers a national championship, one of the best teams Dayton has ever fielded, and they are advancing to the round of 32 where they will take on the St. Mary's Gales, who took down Utah State. Unfortunately for the Aggies, the second year in a row they have fallen in the round of 64 after phenomenal years. St. Mary's winning that game 83-71, and as we all know, the Gales are a dangerous shooting team. The Gales are very, very dangerous. When they get hot, they are tough to stop. Dayton's going to have their hands full in that 1-8 versus eight matchup. Right below that, another 5-12 matchup, Usually a very trendy upset pick when you pick your brackets, but there has not been one yet. A 12 seed has not defeated a 5, and it did not happen here in the East as the reigning national champions, the Virginia Cavaliers, took down Yale 67-60. Two teams that are known for their academic prowess also have been really building up some phenomenal basketball teams in recent years. Virginia escaping that one and will set up an ACC matchup in the round of 32 as Louisville got past 13th seeded Vermont 71 to 64. 
And as we mentioned, Vermont was a dangerous team. The Catamounts, a team that you do not want to overlook. A team uh, that when they get hot, like St. Mary's, is very difficult to beat. And Louisville was in that game until the very end. They were not able to rest their starters in that one. But escaping and setting up a 4-5 matchup against the Cavaliers, who Louisville lost to in the regular season finale. Following that, we had one of our major upsets yet again as Texas, a team that snuck into this NCAA tournament field, a team that had to get past North Carolina State in a play-in game just to reach the round of 64. They took down six-seeded BYU 79-67, a 12-point victory for the Longhorns. We talk football a lot here at the Gridiron Expert. I don't know if Texas is back in football, but they might be back in basketball. Shaka Smart and his team trending in the right direction, getting hot at the right time. Texas could be a slight Cinderella team in this year's tournament, and they will have to get past Michigan State in the round of 32. The Spartans taking down the Hofstra Pride 74-60. to Pretty easy money for Cassius Winston and Tom Izzo there, looking once again to make a return trip to the Final Four. Right below them, rounding out the East, we had a 7-10 matchup and a 7-10 thriller as Rutgers took down Texas Tech. Rutgers took down the team that finished second in last year's NCAA tournament, taking down Chris Beard and the Red Raiders 71-70. And guys, this one was a barn burner. Rutgers taking a 71-69 lead late in the game. Texas Tech getting fouled with just half a second left. So they went one for two at the line. I told you, told you at the beginning, I'll tell you again now, those free throws guys can be very clutch. Houston knows it, Texas Tech, Texas Tech knows it, but the other teams that watch those teams miss aren't complaining. Rutgers, for the first time since 1983, is advancing in this NCAA tournament after making their first appearance since 1991. And if they want to continue this magical season, they will have to get past Kentucky in the round of 32, the Wildcats taking down the North Dakota State Bison, 84-62. Once again, an expected result as the two seed over the 15 seed. And concluding this round of 64 recap, we move on to the West region, where Gonzaga, the number one seed in that region, just barely escaped the 16th seeded Eastern Washington Eagles, 82-78. The Bulldogs were up by just two points with 30 seconds left. They got a quick bucket and a steal to finally pull away and win the game by four. Gonzaga, you do question, after a slow and concerning performance in the round of 64, will they be ready for Long Kruger's Oklahoma Sooners, who took down USC in that 8-9 matchup, taking down the Trojans 83-76. to Oklahoma, a team that many question, why are they even in this field? But we're seeing it now, to go out west to defeat a Trojan squad that finished with 22 wins this season. Oklahoma was a team that finished in the top three of the Big 12 standings, and they're looking to continue their magical season with a win over the top-seeded Bulldogs. Back down to that 5-12 matchup. This was the one that many thought could be the upset. This was probably the most trendy 12-over-5 upset pick, but it did not happen. The Auburn Tigers took down Stephen F. Austin, 83-69. Many thought the Lumberjacks, who had just one loss in conference play, a team that went on the road and defeated Duke this season, might be able to upend the Tigers, who made a Final Four run last year. But Bruce Pearl had other ideas. Once again, Auburn, a hot shooting team. They lit it up from three yet again to clinch a 14-point win and to set up a date against the Maryland Terrapins who got past 13th seeded North Texas 87 to 64. We mentioned that North Texas is a very large team. North Texas is a team that knows how to rebound and they have a great inside game and Maryland had to be prepared for that. They absolutely were. A dominating 23 point win will set up a very fun one in the round of 32 between the Terps and the Tigers. Coming down to the 6-11 matchup, we've seen a handful of 11 seeds win. Actually, Every 11 seed has won up until the West region where Penn State took down East Tennessee State 76-61 in a game that, like the auburn Stephen F. Austin game, many thought would be the most trendy 11 over 6 upset pick as East Tennessee had 30 wins on the season. 
It was not enough to get past Lamar Stevens, though. Penn State getting the win there by 15 points, dominating fashion, I should add. And they will be taking on the Oregon Ducks, the three seed, going from a 12 seed in last year's tournament to a three seed this year, who took down the Bradley Braves 84-69, to a 15-point victory for Dana Altman, Peyton Pritchard, and the Ducks. Penn State and Oregon, a game that we would love to see in college football, but for right now, we're just going to have to accept that we're seeing it now in the NCAA tournament. And once again, rounding out the Western region, rounding out this round of 64, we saw Arizona State get past Bob Huggins' West Virginia Mountaineers 92-85 in what was one of the largest scoring games in this round of 64. The Bobby Hurley Sun Devils came to play. They were on the bubble up until the end. They clinched that 10 seed. We mentioned that they could have gone as high as, to, as an 8 seed. But they like to play that underdog role for now. And the Sun Devils will be taking on the two seed, San Diego State Aztecs, who nearly lost to Winthrop 65-62. The Aztecs just getting by. So this Western region, guys, I have a lot of faith and I truly believe we're going to see some big-time upsets between the round of 32 until the end. The top two seeds struggling against a 16 and a 15 seed. So you might very well see Arizona State get past the Aztecs. You might see the Sooners get past the Bulldogs. The West region going to be pretty wild down the stretch. But for right now, the South region owns the one for having the most madness in the round of 64. So ladies and gentlemen, that is what your NCAA tournament field looks like just right now. We are going to have updates for the round of 32 over on our Twitter page, at Gridiron Expert. I promise you do not want to miss it. We're keeping you updated game by game as they happen, keeping you posted on the results. We'll come back here with a round of 32 recap, and then of course we will start showing you the game starting with the Sweet 16 all the way until the championship. And those are the ones I can promise you you certainly do not want to miss. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert. Go follow us on Twitter. Make sure to follow us NCAA tournament coverage. Thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.